wanted to take a moment to chat to you guys a little bit about visual hallucinations. So if you happen to see our, our, our paper that just came out, uh, if you haven't, the link's below, and the associated videos, link's below. It went crazy on the internet, viral in fact. Now this has got a lot of discussions going about this question, what is a hallucination? A lot of my colleagues have been asking, what makes a hallucination? If I imagine something, if I imagine an apple, and I have the visual conscious experience of an apple, am I hallucinating that apple? Question mark. What do you guys think? Many would say that no, because I voluntarily imagined the apple, I created that image in my mind voluntarily, that wouldn't be hallucination. Now there are many visual illusions. A lot of my colleagues have emailed and, and chatted to me about visual illusions. Just to name a few, something called the neon color spreading illusion. So what you may have noticed is that you had these four inducers, we'll call them, and then you experienced some color in the center. And in fact, there was no color in the center there. That was induced. Your brain was creating that conscious experience of color as it does all your experiences of color. But it was creating that experience of color where your eyes were not being stimulated, where there was no color information hitting your eyes. So another example is a Herman grid illusion. There are many illusions where you have these types of visual experiences that do not directly relate to information, to light, hitting your eyes. And we've got different names for these, phantom vision, non-retinal vision, right? So the visual experience is not based on the light hitting your retina on your eyes. So can we call these kinds of experiences hallucinations? What do you think? Well, one idea might be that because every time we show that particular arrangement, those four inducers, for example, we see and experience color in the center there. As that's 100% predictable, Maybe it's not like a hallucination. Every time we put the color induces there, you experience color in the center. Now let's have a little quick chat about the flicker stuff. So the paper we just published, we're flickering uh, our lights on and off, flashing lights, and indeed a flashing ring. When we flicker the ring, you experience things. So when you flick a light, you see shapes, colors, all different shapes. Now is this just an illusion, just like the other ones I just showed you, the neon color, or is it somehow different? So where we came down in this paper, and where others have come down, and decided to call the flickering stuff hallucinations and not an illusion, is because the content is continually unpredictable. Every time I show you flickering light, you'll see something a little bit different. You won't always see the same stripy pattern spinning around, or the same color. One moment you'll see colors, the next moment you'll see blobs, the next moment you'll see stripes, lines, spirals, windmill spinning around, some colors. So it's one always different and it changes continuously. So for that reason, because we can't predict what you're going to experience, we feel comfortable calling it a hallucination, not an illusion. But, of course, it's up for discussion. There's no hard and fast rule. There's no clear definition of what a hallucination is. Others have said, no, 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 no. A hallucination is just when you experience something, a sensory, let's say visual experience, with no stimulation. So no information is hitting your eyes, but you have a visual experience. So this might be under conditions of sensory deprivation, when you're sleeping maybe, uh, and you have a visual experience. So those kind of situations would fit the bill, fit the criteria for being a hallucination. Now, the cool thing about this is that there's no right or wrong answer. Different people from different areas, from medicine, from psychiatry, from brain science, from psychology, might have different opinions and different views on what makes a hallucination. But what I find interesting is the fact that there's no clear definition and that people start debating over this and have strong opinions about what is and what is not a hallucination, people often say the sore points reveal the important points. And so this 
lack of a definition of a hallucination seemingly is quite important. I think we need some kind of criteria or framework for defining a hallucination. Why? Why do we care? Why is it important? Well, if you're going to study hallucinations, we need a framework. We need a clear definition. If we're going to be able to study things in the lab and then translate and apply that research to help people who suffer hallucinations as a symptom, then we need to have a clear definition of what hallucinations are and what we can learn from illusions, mental imagery, flickering light, and what that tells us about pathological hallucinations, for example, in Parkinson's disease. So I hope that one tells you a little bit about why we call the flickering annulus, the flickering light stimuli hallucinations, to a little bit of a flavor or the lay of the land as to the lack of a clear understanding and definition or framework for what a hallucination is, but more importantly, the importance for why we really do need a definition. So we need this ultimately to help people and to alleviate suffering. So I hope you found that interesting. Thanks a lot. See you next time. Thank you.